Watching this film, I found some interesting Doctor Who facts about it. There are two future Doctors in this film. Peter Capaldi plays one of the professors in the art gallery, but also, and if you, in a blink and you'll miss it, Christopher Eccleston, the future ninth Doctor, is also in this film. Not, well, sort of. The big Jude film poster is in the background where he was the lead role. Also, Doc Conn from EastEnders was in this film. But that's good things. What, what was wrong with the film? Let's find out. Bean, or as it's also known as Bean, the ultimate disaster movie, was a 1997 comedy film based on the British TV series Mr. Bean. It tells the story of Bean actually traveling to America under the guise of being a arts connoisseur, so to speak, and gets into hijinks in America with the family he's staying in. When the film was released, it got mixed reviews, but it was a box office success. But what was wrong with it? Well, let me explain 10 things wrong with Bean. Number 10, movie poster. As a YouTuber, I am well aware of how important thumbnails, the poster of your video is. It has to be engaging, as well as telling the audience what it's about. Things this film got completely wrong. Have a look at this movie poster. What does that tell you about this film? Well, nothing. It says the word BEAN in big riveted steel letters. This looks more like a, you know, action film starring Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger. This does not scream this is a Mr. Bean film. Now, the second more commonly seen poster where Mr. Bean's running away with one of the letters, great. That is a perfect poster for this film. But yet the original poster where it was just Bean didn't really tell us what the film was about. Number nine, all English guys are ugly. Now, Okay, granted this is nothing wrong with the film itself, but I am taking personal exception to this point. I'm English. Am I ugly? Well, my girlfriend doesn't think so, I hope. But we have David Beckham, one of the world's most sexiest men alive. And hell, even people find James Corden attractive. <laughs> Why did, no, I didn't like that joke. I found offense to that joke. Granted, that's a personal thing, but I'm putting it on my list. It's my list. Number eight, too much talking. One of the unique things about Mr. Bean the TV series is the fact it doesn't need any language. It can be sold to every country in the planet and you don't have to pay for dubbing. True story, when I was 14, on the way back from a holiday in Spain, the plane actually showed an episode of Mr. Bean and the entire plane was laughing. Nobody had headphones in, nobody was listening to it, but everybody was hooked and watching Mr. Bean. And that is the main selling point of Mr. Bean. Something this film missed completely. There was way too much talking. And even Mr. Bean spoke too, too much. Normally it's just like, but you knew what he said. Yet in this film, he actually talked quite well and it sort of ruined the whole mystique of Mr. Bean. Number seven, ripping off Beetlejuice. I love Beetlejuice. That is an amazing film. I haven't done a video on it. I may do one day, but it is a brilliant film. So the first thing I'm going to notice when you're starting a film and you are pretty much copying the opening music from Beetlejuice. No, that's a no, no. That will always end up on this list. You rip off Beetlejuice, you'll end up on my lists. But yeah, if you watch the beginning, it's like dun -dun, the same sort of thing as Beetlejuice does when it opens up. Number six. Rehashing old jokes. When watching this film, one of the things I got the impression of, this was more of a compilation of greatest jokes from the TV series, rather than something unique and something original. If I wanted to see them, I'll go and watch the original TV series. I, I wanted to see, you know, a new version of Mr. Bean. I wanted to see something new, but not just rehashing old jokes. It didn't really work. Number five. Showing mic boxes. As I've improved doing these videos, I've actually got more and more equipment. And one of the things you may have noticed I've started doing is wearing an external mic. I have the box in my pocket. You can't see it. You can see this bit, but that's it. So when you're watching a big multi-million pounds budget feature, I don't want to see that equipment. Yet, during one of the scenes, you can actually see Rowan Atkinson's 
mic box behind him when he's just doing that. That was a big flaw. Bizarrely enough, that's not a flaw that appears in the TV series. Now, before anyone says he was wired up to actually make his speech, no, it was the scene before when he first actually destroys Whistler's mother's painting. He had no reason to be mic'd up. It is actually props from the film. Number four, why, why, why? Anyone who, who knows about Mr. Bean knows that Mr. Bean is a clumsy you know what, and you wouldn't trust him with anything. Except the curator does leave him alone in a room with a painting worth $50 million, even after he knows that Mr. Beans is a complete and utter clut. Why would you do that? Come on, why, why, why? Doesn't make sense. You should have actually dragged him out with you or made him wait in the hall. Do not leave him alone in a room with a $15 million painting. No. Number three, too intelligent. Another one of the charms of Mr. Bean or this TV show is how he tries to do these simplest things and he messes it up in a humorous way. That's what makes us love him so much, that the fact he is a kind-hearted person and he always gets into these issues through no fault of his own. So when he's doing this high-powered heist, breaking into a gallery to steal a $50 million painting would never happen in a million years. It's all like, no, that's not Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean cannot do that at all. It, no, it wouldn't make sense at all. And it, I don't know, I, do you know what? I just hated that part of it. Number two, too long. Another thing that's great about the TV series is the fact that there are only like 25 minute episodes. So you can watch it, have some fun, great. Done and dusted in half an hour. And that's all you need. And you're happy and you're fine with that. So imagine an hour and a half feature length film, it didn't quite pull off. Now I don't say it was because it was Mr. Bean's fault. In fact, it wasn't. One of the reasons why it just felt so long was because Mr. Bean wasn't the central character. The curator and his family and all the issues he's having with his family. That was more the A parts. You know, well, I wanted to watch Mr. Bean. And yeah, this just dragged Mr. Bean's rehashing of old jokes too long. And yeah, it's quite boring. I feel really bad at saying that. Number one, where's Teddy? This point is more for the Still Wounds and Nation, because on every video, he always comments saying, this person was missing, this person was missing, this person was missing. Well, today, I agree with Ian at the Still Wounds and Nation. This film was missing Teddy. Yeah, I'm being serious, by the way. Teddy was missing. Teddy is actually the secondary character from the TV show, and the stuff that Teddy goes through, oh my God, I feel sorry for that Teddy. I can't believe I'm actually talking about a teddy bear. But, Teddy wasn't in this film. Well, he was, right at the very end when that really creepy bed scene, which was really creepy, I'm being kind. But no Teddy, where was Teddy? Not being funny, Mr. Bean would have taken Teddy to America with him. Teddy would have been by his side the whole way through and Teddy was not there. <sighs> I have some serious issues here. Final thought. So the tagline to this film is the ultimate disaster movie. Well, I got that right because this movie is a disaster. You're trying to take everything that was good about the TV series, put it onto the big screen and you missed everything what made the TV series good. Now, if this was a standalone and first time you've ever made this film, no, it would have still flopped as well. It would have been a much more worse than it actually already was. I'm babbling a bit. That's how much this film is actually winds me up. I'm English. I love Mr. Bean. Who does not love Mr. Bean except for this film? Now, this was a requested video by someone by the name of Robert Wass, and I wish he hadn't asked me to watch this because this has just tarnished my image of Mr. Bean. After filming this, before editing, I'm going to go and watch some old episodes of Mr. Bean just to, you know, get my Bean love back on. But yeah, this film... It had no heart, it had no soul. 
The chemistry between husband and wife curators was non-existent, the children were boring, there was nothing to this film. Even Mr Bean himself, he was too good. He wasn't as clumsy and dim-witted as we come to know and love in the TV series. This film is absolutely appalling. And I still can't believe I'm saying it. Anyway, on to the ratings. What am I going to rate it? Three. Yeah. I am really slating this film. I couldn't stand it. If I have, I'm never going to probably watch this again. It's awful. But that's my opinion. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Did you love this film? Because there are people out there who did like this film. I mean, it was only mixed reviews. This is a negative review of this film. Anybody? Put your opinion in the comments below. Next week, it's New Year. It's a new year. It's a new day. Let's do some scary films. Yeah, we'll do something scary next week. I'll catch you later. See you next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.